Okay, everybody, we're going on to the last model of the atom, and that's going to be the quantum mechanical model. Okay, and this model is a little bit more complicated than what we've done in the past. Uh, we got through Bohr, uh, and then uh, Bohr had the rings around the, uh, the energy levels around the uh, nucleus, where the electrons were in these paths, these orbits around the nucleus. And now things are going to change a little bit, because in this case, we get into a period of time where there's a lot of, uh, a lot of discovery going on. Uh, a lot of scientists are involved in this, and we start to get more and more evidence uh, that the electrons are, uh, you know, held a little bit differently or exist a little bit differently around the uh, around the atom. Uh, and again, this is spectral analysis. This is also mathematical analysis. This is, you know, a bunch of different, um, you know, ionization energy data. There's a lot of data that comes out that that points in the direction of this being something different. So. Uh, hang in there a little bit. If you have to rewind and go back through this or ask some questions in class, this in the beginning is a little complicated, but it, it, you eventually, eventually get the hang of it as we move on. Okay. So the quantum mechanical model basically, uh, treats the electron as not just a, uh, you know, you're not just going around the nucleus in these orbits, but rather orbitals. So the word orbital simply means a region of space. So instead of the electrons being in these orbits going around the nucleus, we're going to be in this, this cloud or this haze or this, this negative region of space, uh, three dimensions around the nucleus called an orbital. Okay. Uh, and instead of treating it as a particle, as, which, as if this particle was like rotating or a planet rotating around the sun as if it was a, an, an actual particle, we're going to treat them as energy waves. So in this case, electrons can, not, can act as particles, but they can also be, you know, calculated a little, they also follow wave properties as well. And again, some of this was data that was, that was found at the time. Um, this mathematical probability or probability that the electrons are going to be in this area uh, is, comes from something called the Schrodinger equation. And we won't be solving this equation, but think of it as, a, as almost like a 90% probability the electrons will be in that area, okay? And again, that that's an area around this orbital, around the nucleus where they most likely occur, okay? We're not going to have ring-like fixed orbits at all, okay? And again, you may have, uh, the way this, again, as a scientist was in here, was Heisenberg, he was a German scientist, uh, and, he, and he, given his ideas, uh, he came forth and said it's really impossible to know the position and the speed of electron at any given moment going around the nucleus. So again, this points to the fact that, you know, the nucleus is in the middle, and then you have these positions where the electron can be around the nucleus, this almost like positions where it could be a probability that it's going to be in a local area, but not necessarily sitting on a ring. All right, so that's the idea uh, of this. Again, not easily explained, but again, the quantum. Again, quantum means uh, chunk right? Or, or quant or chunk of particle or chunk, chunk of space or the quantum simply means that, you know, you can, you can, you can have things, you can um, describe them as particles or you can describe them as waves going around the nucleus. So again, difficult to explain, difficult to understand it, but I think you get an idea of what the electron cloud or how this was, was perceived. All right. Now this becomes the model of how we're going to deal with this because again, we're not so where is the electron? That becomes the, 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 the question here, because we really want to know, to be able to pinpoint where it is, get an idea where it is, and still match what data that we see. Okay, so when we do something like this, um, I like to think of it as a hotel. So let's just say you, you're checking into a hotel. And if you check into a hotel, the first thing you're going to do is go to, and again, if you were in, when we're in class, we can kind of have a little fun with this, but because we're in the, the way we're doing things, we kind of have to go with this. So let's just say you check into a hotel. And you go down here and you, you walk into the, the, the lobby, you see the lobbies down here in the bottom. So that, what that's going to be is that's going to be our nucleus. So let's just say, uh, for, int for all intents and purposes, our nucleus is down here at the lobby desk. It's here. So that's the positive nucleus. All right. And then we have floor one representing an energy level, floor two representing an energy level, floor three and floor four. And, you, and as you go away from the nucleus and further from the nucleus, you have these energy levels just like in the Bohr amount. However, what we're going to do in a new way, is start splitting these floors into sections, okay? Now, Bohr did not do this. This is the new model, okay? So what you would first do is you'd, you'd, you'd get your key to your room, and then you'd go up to the first floor, okay? 
And what you do is you find the wing or the, the area of the floor where your room is. Now, again, you wouldn't go directly to your room. You'd find the hallway where your room is. Now, you all know that if you get out of a whole, get out of an elevator on vacation or you, you stay at a hotel, you usually get out of the elevator and find which hallway to go down. Sometimes you can go to the left or to the right. So that's going to be designated as the wing of the hotel, right? The wing of that floor. And then you would find your room, right? So your room would be in that spot. And then you would go into the room and there would be the bed. And in this, in this particular hotel, okay, you'd have a bed that could fit two people. So one person sleeps this way, one person sleeps that way, and you can fit two people in the room. All right. So typically that's what happens. So you st- check into the hotel, you go to the correct floor, you go to the correct wing, you go to the correct room, and then you, and then you sleep in, in the bed at the end of the day or, you know, in, the, in that particular manner. Okay. So this is a little different. So if you have a little trouble understanding this, you can help think about this idea. All right. So I think of this as a, a hotel analogy of electron location. All right. So first of all, the hotel, the whole hotel here is going to be the atom. Okay. The floor is going to become something called a principal energy level. The principal energy is very similar to Bohr. It's the energy level that you're staying on. So if it's floor number one, that would be energy level number one and then number one, two, three. Okay. This is becomes a little different. Now the sub level is simply the wings where the floor is broken up. Okay. So wing number one, we're going to call that the S wing. Okay. And again, these letters, we're going to use these letters for, um, so this becomes the S wing. So wing number one is always an S wing. Okay. So floor number one would have an S wing. Floor number two would have an S wing but would also have a P wing, okay? Floor number three would have an S wing, would also have a P wing, okay? And would also have a D wing, because that would be next. Now notice, and then I'm drawing these boxes. Now these rooms is where the electrons would reside. Those are called orbitals, okay? So those would be the wing, those are the sublevels, okay? So the, the, these wings would be sublevels and the boxes would be your orbitals. So an S wing is always gonna have Two, a P wing is, so this would be S, this would be P. A P would always have these three boxes. Okay, so this would be S, this would be P, this would be D, has five. And floor four, the S, the P, the P, and the P would also have a D, a D, a D, and a D, and that would have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so floor four, so you can, you got to kind of follow the pattern. You, you'll, you'll see the pattern after a while that, so floor number one has one wing. Floor number two has two wings. Floor number three has three wings. And floor number four has four wings. And each wing has a certain number of boxes to it. Okay, the name of the wings are SPDF. Okay, now a room is the 3D region of space where the electrons are going to be. The arrows are the electrons. Okay, and in this electron, in this box, in this, in this orbital, you can only hold two electrons. Okay, so that's the pattern. That's what we're going to follow. So if you have an atom with a certain number of electrons, you're going to have to fill them starting from floor number one. And if floor number one is done, you move on to floor number two. And when floor number two is done, you move on to floor number two, three and so on. Okay. Now the electron spin is this up down thing. So if you're looking at the reason why, you know, this is the case, what scientists have found is that each orbital can hold two electrons only if the two electrons have a certain up down, uh, quality to them. And they call that spin. So it's spin up and spin down. So this would be spin up, this would spin down. So you can only be in the same box if you have this opposite spin kind of idea. So again, we're going to follow that as we go. And if you look at wing number two uh, with with the P wing, you can see if um, I'm adding a person to a room first, before I go back and I double them up, I would double them up again with down spins. Okay. So I know this sounds very complicated. I know it sounds like a, a weird pattern, but scientists have matched this pattern with data and found that to be kind of kind of a good idea. So how do you f- figure each floor? Well, the maximum number of electrons you can fit in a floor, okay, is going to have the designation of 2n squared. Okay, so simply that means that in energy level 1, okay, and you guys, you probably know this already, in energy level 1, if you put 1 in for the n, you would have 2 times n, uh, so times 1 squared, which would be 2. In energy level 2, you would have two, right, times two squared, which would be eight, okay, and so on. So you can figure this out for each floor, okay? So N, 
again, if n is the principal energy level, n here would be in that n there. Okay, so we need to take a look at this and see what the examples would be like here. All right, so this is a big slide here, so we're going to spend a little time on this slide. So just be aware of that and be ready to go. And if you have to ask questions, ask questions. Okay, so let's just say we have this situation right here, and again, you're going to see this designation um, here. Okay, if I back up a little bit. All right, so we have something called an electron configuration, which is the setup of the electrons in the atom. And we're also going to be able to draw something called an orbital diagram, which shows us the boxes of how the electrons are being filled. All right, now I want you to look at this diagram here and the periodic table that's here. Okay, and the, the, the important thing is to realize that you're going to think about your nucleus being down over here. Okay, and this being energy level one. Okay, this being energy level two here. See that? So think about that being energy level two. All right. This being energy level three. Okay. And you can see it's split up into these levels, the S, the P, the D, the S, the P, and the S. Okay. And we're also going to look at the periodic table and see that the periodic table actually has three different rectangles to it. It's got a rectangle over here called the S level. It's got the a, a, a square rectangle here called the P level, okay? It's got a D level in the middle, this, this rectangle here, and it's got the F level at the bottom, which we're not going to pay too much attention to here, all right? And that's going to be the in interesting part that we're going to see a little later on, all right? So really, really important to know, and, and again, we're going to do some examples, so we'll see how this works. We're going to always fill starting at the bottom, starting with 1S, okay? Now, what does this really mean? Okay, when you see an electron configuration, it's going to have these, this, this particular designation. Uh, and if you look at the example 1s, what the 1s2 means is the energy level is the first number. Okay, so that's going to be that, that important thing. Just get some pen color here. Okay, so one's going to be the energy level. The s is going to be the sublevel, or this is the wing, or the section of that energy level where those electrons are. Okay, and the two here is the number of electrons in that orbital. And again, an orbital only holds, holds two electrons in that case. So 1s2 would look like that. Again, it would look like an up-down arrow. Those would be the two electrons in that box. So this is not an exponent. You're not doing any math here. You're just writing a code for where those electrons are in the atom. Okay? So that's the idea. So how do we want to do this? So let's do some examples. Let's just to say we want to find the electron configuration of hydrogen. Now, hydrogen is atomic number one, so it's going to have one electron. Now, where are we going to put that electron? If we go to our table down here, we're going to start with the first energy level, with the first wing, with one electron in box number one. So what we would do is we'd simply fill this with one electron. We put the electron in there. So that would be 1s, okay? 1s1. So we would call that a 1s1 Hydrogen has one electron. Where would I put it? The first energy level, S-wing box number one. Now, if I go to the next, uh, 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 so this would be helium, this would be hydrogen up here. If we go to helium, we'll see that helium actually has two electrons, atomic number two. Okay? Now, since, since atom, uh, helium has atomic number two, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to fill up helium with the first box, right? So since helium has two electrons, and that's going to be atomic number two, Okay, and again, I have to flip-flop between my colors here. So if I go to atomic number two, that means you have two electrons. Well, where am I going to put those two electrons? Well, I'm going to start with energy level one with wing number two, uh, wing number one, and I'm going to put boxes in wing uh, two, two electrons in that box. So I would go and I'd fill this. Okay, and I'd go here to black, and I'd put an up arrow and a down arrow. Okay, and that would fill that energy level, right? It's because the first energy level, as you can see down here, the first energy level, number one, only has two electrons. So this, this is what you'd look like. So helium actually has both filled, all right? And that's important because as you get to the edge of the table, you'll find out that this column has all those boxes filled, all right? So that's going to be an interesting thing going forward. All right, let's finish. Let's, let's continue. If we go to the next element, we'll have lithium as the next element. And the next element would be um, atomic number three. Now, where would we put those electrons? Well, we would have to fill the first box, right? So we'd have to fill 1s2, but we have an extra electron. So we're going to take helium 
And really, lithium is just one more electron, but we can't fit that extra electron in box number one. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to go from 1s1, 1s2 in, helium, in lithium. We're going to have to fill the next one with an extra electron. All right, so we're going to go into the second energy level for the first time and fill a 1s2. So we'll have 1s2, sorry, and then a 2s1. Okay, so we'll do 1s2, 2s1. Okay, and that would be the 2s1. Okay, so here's the 2s1 electron in that spot. All right, there's my bell. <laughs> All right, now let's go to the next element. The next element, if you go now, of course, now when you're in the S to 2s level, notice that in the periodic table, uh, you know, again, lithium is here. We've, and now we're going to go to beryllium. We've entered into the 2s level. So again, hydrogen's an S level electron, helium's an S level electrons. And you'll see lithium is an S-level electron, so is beryllium. So beryllium is the next one, at atomic number four. So when we get to atomic number four, okay, again, um, we have four valence, four electrons now, right? So if we have four electrons, we now are going to fill this one up, all right? Now, again, we have four, so we're going to start at the beginning again. We're going to have 1s1, 1s2, and then we're going to have to go to the 2s. Now, just like lithium, we'd have a 2s1 electron, but now we're going to go over to our chart here, and now we're going to have to fill it in another electron to make that 2s2. Okay, and again, sometimes I do these half arrows. That's okay. You can you can make them half arrows. You can make them full arrows. Me, I'm just used to doing half the arrows because it fits better in the boxes, but you get the idea. So that would be an electron like that, really. Okay? And again, we can continue this process. So as we keep going across now, I want to do one more because this one this one's important because in, in, in boron... Uh, boron, if we keep going, we can keep building. Boron's going to be atomic number five. And for the first time, if you take a look, what's next is once you finish the 2S, we now are going to go into the 2P for the first time. Right? So if we do our boxes, again, we're going to draw a 1S. We're going to have a 2S box. But now if you take a look at the 2P, the 2P is going to have three boxes, a 2P, a 2P, and a 2P. Okay. And simply what we're going to do is we're going to take our five electrons and we're going to add them in order. We're going to go 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, and now we're going to do 2p1. So we're going to have a lonely electron here out in 2p1. All right? So if I increase this, if I keep going across the table, I'll keep adding my boxes and I'll keep following this chart as I go. I'll have 2p1. And then if you look at carbon, and carbon will be the last one I'll do here and then we'll finish them all through, okay? Carbon will be atomic number six. And the reason I wanted to show you this one is because if we go to carbon number six and we have a 2P, we have a 2P2, we're going to go 1S2, 2S2, and watch this. I'm going to go 1, 2P1, but I'm not going to put another one here. These electrons, because they're in the same box here, they're going to start to spread out because they repel each other. Remember, they're negative, so they'll repel and they'll repel each other into the next box. So you won't fill these boxes until you at least fill one first and then go back and fill the rest of them. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of these up here so we can see. All right? And I'll be able to fill the rest of these for you. So again, we'll be um, nitrogen will be 7, okay? And nitrogen will look like this. Okay? Oxygen will be 8. Again, you can do the atomic numbers. Now, again, watch oxygen. Oxygen is going to have the same thing as nitrogen, but we're going to go back now and begin to fill it up. Eight. Okay, fluorine is a very special element. We'll see why later. Okay, is nine. Okay, and then good old neon. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So neon is very special, very similar to helium is that neon will fill the second energy level. So helium fills with two. Neon fills with 10, fills everything here. And again, guess who's at the end of the table? Neon is here at the end of the table, just like helium. Okay, so something significant here at the end of the table, we keep filling this P6 at the end of the table every time the six is filled. All right, so that's the plan. Uh, again, it takes a lot of practice. Maybe we'll practice one more here. Um, let's, let's practice a couple here just so we can see how we're going to do this. 
um, it might be weird to go kind of go back and forth, but you guys will be on the page. Let's say if I had, uh, let's just say I did some examples here. Uh, of, let's say I wanted to do sodium, atomic number 11. So I have 11 electrons and I have to fill it. Okay, so I'm going to start with 1s2. Then I'm going to go to 2s2. Sorry, I could do that again. So let's say I go back again. So let's say I go back here. Again, I have sodium, atomic number 11. So I'm going to have to fill 11 electrons. So where am I going to start? I'm going to start at 1s2. Okay. I'm going to then go to 2s2. And then I'm going to go to 2p, right? So I have 1s2 I'm going to fill, one up, one down. 2s2 I'm going to fill up, one up, one down. And remember, when I go to p, I have three boxes I have to fill. Okay. So I'm going to go 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, and 2p6. Okay. Now that gives me 10 electrons. Sodium has 11 electrons. So I have to go one more space. I have to, I have to find something to go to. Now I've already finished the one. I finished the first energy level and I finished the second. So where am I going to go? I'm going to go on to the third energy level. So again, the P is here. So what I'm going to do is three. S1. Again, S always has a single box. So my first, my electron, my 11th electron is going to go to that box. Okay? All right. So this is called the E config, the configuration. Okay? And these boxes are called the orbital diagram. You have to be able to do both. Okay? All right. Now let's just do another one. Let's say I wanted to do aluminum. Aluminum is atomic number 13. Again, I have 13 electrons. Start at 1s. I'm going to have 1s2. Fill the first box. Okay. 2s2. Fill that box. Now, the second energy level has a p level. Again, I'm going to fill that box. I'm going to count my electrons. I already have four electrons here. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 electrons. All the boxes filled. Okay. The first here gives me 10 electrons. I need 13. What am I going to do? I'm going to go on to the 3s level. Okay, 3s. Okay, so I'm going to go 3s. I'm going to go, that's the 11th electron, the 12th electron. I need 13. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go on to the third 3p. Okay, and the 3p says p3, p3p2, and then I only need one. Remember, 3p's, p always has three boxes. Okay, so we're going to go 3P1. Okay, so that would be electron configuration of aluminum. 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P1. Okay, and last but not least, we'll do one more. We'll do chlorine. Okay, so chlorine is atomic number 17, so we have 17 electrons. So we're going to go 1S2, 2S2, 2P6. Again, that's 10, right? Then we're going to go 3S2. Again, 3P. Now, again, let's look at this. We have 3S1, 3, 3, there we go. Up, 1, up, down. Again, we're going to have six electrons here. Sorry, six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, we're going to have a 3S2. Okay, and we're going to have a 3P5. All right, because remember, two and two is four, 10, 12. I need five more for 17, right? So you need five electrons. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay? And that's going to be the plan. Okay? So this it becomes the electron configurations of these elements. Okay? If you have to go back and check them, go back and check them. And again, if I go backwards, you'll see this is the plan, right? We're going, and then lastly, here's the plan. How we're going to follow this plan is simple. We're going to go 1s to 2s to 2p, to 3s, to 3p, and now it gets a little weird. We're gonna, not going to go to the D level. We're going to go to the S of the new energy level. This is going to be a little bit of a problem. This is, becomes a little bit of an issue, so we're going to go over this on another video. Okay. So as long as you got the simple elements here up through neon uh, and through chlorine, we're looking pretty good. Okay. We'll talk to you soon. Hang in there. If you got to rewatch it, rewatch it. Come to class asking questions. We'll talk to you later.